History tells the story of the world and of our lives. Sometimes that history goes bump in the night. Broadcasting from the center of oddity and the supernatural in Central Florida, it's the History Goes Bump podcast. Hello, you spectacular people. Welcome to this 363rd episode of the History Ghost Bump podcast, Ghost Tours for the Theater of the Mind. I am your host, Diane. And this is Kelly. Kelly, on this episode, we're going on a battleship. Ah, we had such a good time. Boy, did we. We did an investigation on this one, and this was my first time ever on a battleship. I had only been on one once before when I toured Pearl Harbor, I believe. Oh, sure. When I was okay. A kid. With my parents. Yeah, I've only ever seen battleships from the outside, so it was really cool to get to go inside of one and see what it looked like on the inside. It was amazing. And you really stand in awe when you stop to think. You know, you just close your eyes for a minute. And you can hear the bullets and the bombs all around you when you're standing up there on the main deck. And you can just imagine how scary that was as you're trying to control the artillery that's up there and shoot down some of these kamikaze planes that are flying at you. Definitely. It, it was a really unique experience getting to be on that ship. Or even torpedoes coming at the ship. And this one actually got hit by one. Right. So we are looking forward to bringing that to you guys. And we got to meet some of the ghost hunters that we haven't met before. And Kelly, we don't do these things because we like to meet the celebrities. We actually just wanted to go and do the hunt on the, this <laughs> exactly. battleship. I'm like, oh, the ghost hunters are going to be there? Okay, I guess that's cool. But we really enjoyed them. And these guys were just as down to earth as Daryl was. So we had a great time. Yep, absolutely. They were very down to earth. I had a great time. We were joined by several of our listeners. We had Dolly with us, Whitney with us, Myra and her boyfriend, Ken, and Tiffany and her husband, Dan. We've done investigations with Whitney, Myra, Ken, and Dolly before, but this was our first time with Tiffany and Dan, so that was pretty special. We want to welcome into the Spooktacular crew, Dez, Susan, Karen, Mark with a C, Carrie, Liz, Ty, Miranda, Mary, and Phil. Thanks for joining us in the Spooktacular crew. And now, this moment in oddity. The moment in oddity was suggested by Scott Booker. Many of you probably have some form of Bluetooth technology in your possession. This could be your Bluetooth toothbrush or Bluetooth speakers, or maybe you're listening to us through your Bluetooth headphones or your phone connected to your car through Bluetooth. Did you ever wonder why it was called Bluetooth? Would you believe that the answer is a 10th century Scandinavian king named Harald Blattend Gormson? He ruled Denmark and Norway from the year 958 until 985. The Blatand part of his name was a nickname. It seems the king had a dead tooth that had turned a gray-blue color. Everyone could see his tooth, and so they started calling him Blatand, which literally translates from Danish to Bluetooth. Three telecommunication powerhouses got together in 1996 to develop a wireless link. These were Intel, Ericsson, and Nokia. They needed a code name for the project, and they chose Bluetooth because the king had united Scandinavia just as his team was going to unite PC and cellular industries with a short-range wireless link. When it came time to choose a permanent name, the team found that their first choice had been trademarked several times, and since time was running out, they just went with what they had. The logo and symbol is King Blatan's initials written in ancient Danish runes. Bluetooth being named for a Scandinavian king with an actual Bluetooth certainly is odd. Grab your slippers, hot chocolate, flashlight, and maybe even that baseball bat. And now, this month in history. In 
in the month of December, on the 17th in 1969, the U.S. Air Force shut down Project Blue Book. Project Blue Book was the third study conducted into the possible existence of unidentified flying objects. Signs and Grudge were the first two and were conducted in the 1940s. Project Blue Book launched in 1952. Thousands of UFO reports were collected and analyzed as to whether they existed and were they a threat to our national security. The Air Force concluded that there was no evidence that UFO sightings were extraterrestrial vehicles, and they were also no threat. Okay, if there's no vehicles, of course they're no threat. (laughs) (laughs) Most UFOs were said to be natural phenomenon. The name Project Blue Book was meant to indicate the importance given to the new project. Universities used blue booklets for their tests. This was like a college final exam. We'd say the Air Force failed in their analysis. The USS North Carolina was a battleship commissioned in 1941 that participated in every major naval battle in the Pacific during World War II. During that time, the battleship had several men die on board and was struck by a Japanese torpedo. The battleship earned 15 battle stars for its efforts. The battleship is today a floating museum that hosts both historical tours and ghost tours. We had the privilege of doing an overnight investigation with not only six of our listeners, but also four of the ghost hunters from the new Ghost Hunter series. On this episode, we share the history and the results of our investigation of the USS North Carolina. This USS North Carolina was not the only and not the first ship to be named for the state of North Carolina, but she was the most decorated one. She was actually the most decorated battleship of World War II, Kelly. And it's probably because it took part in every major naval battle in the Pacific. I know, it's pretty amazing. It really is, and the fact that this thing is still there, intact. It was, however, dry docked and needed some repairs because apparently a hurricane beat it up pretty bad. Right. So we were actually just sitting in mud when we were on the ship. (laughs) We were. (laughs) That's true. USS North Carolina was first known as BB-55, and her keel was laid on October 27th in 1937 at the New York Navy Yard. It had been 16 years since America had built a battleship, and this would be a grand one, measuring 728 feet long with enough weaponry to be considered the world's greatest sea weapon. The ship was armed with nine 16-inch 45 caliber guns in three turrets and 25-inch 38 caliber guns in 10 twin mounts. And we have pictures of us actually pretending to fire some of those. (laughs) We do. So make sure you check out our Instagram. The ship had nine levels. She was one of a line of fast battleships that would be built. And that's literally what they were called, fast battleships, because they moved faster. The North Carolina was commissioned on April 9, 1941, and she was mobilized after the attack on Pearl Harbor with 144 commissioned officers and 2,195 enlisted men that included 86 Marines. The ship's first action would come after she was sent to the Pacific to help out with the Guadalcanal campaign. Her anti-aircraft barrage during the Battle of the Eastern Solomons in August of 1942 helped save the carrier Enterprise. George E. Conlon was killed while performing heroically during this battle on August 24, 1942. He was the first man from the battleship to die. Protecting aircraft carriers would become the North Carolina's main duty. As she traveled along with these carriers, she covered 300,000 miles. She would take a hit by a Japanese torpedo on September 15, 1942, but the rumors of her demise were greatly exaggerated, as they say. Five men died. These were Albert Spears Geary, who was washed overboard, Oscar Calloway Stone, Ingwald Nels Nelson, William Osborne Skelton, and Leonard Edward Pone. The battleship would have many close calls and lose 10 men in action, with 67 wounded. A friendly fire incident on April 6, 1945, killed Edward Emil Brent, John Malcolm Watson, and Carl Elmer Karam Jr. The North Carolina helped to secure the Marshall and Gilbert Islands in 1944. 
She stopped for repairs and then was off to the Battle of the Philippine Sea. Later, when Japan surrendered, she carried men to serve as an occupation force and then made her way back through the Panama Canal to New York for an overhaul. The ship did training exercises on the East Coast after that and was decommissioned June 27, 1947, and placed in the inactive reserve fleet in Bayonne, New Jersey for the next 14 years. After that time, there was talk of scrapping her out, but the residents of North Carolina would not hear of it, and they started the Save Our Ship SOS campaign. It was successful, and they brought the battleship home October 2, 1961. She was dedicated on April 29, 1962 as the state's memorial to its World War II veterans and the 11,000 North Carolinians who died during the war. She serves as a museum now, offering tours, some of which are about ghosts. And that is what we went to investigate. Danny Bradshaw started as a night watchman on the battleship in 1976. He was positive that he shared his space with ghosts. He saw his first spirit shortly after starting as a watchman. He was making his rounds one night and found himself in the kitchen. He reached for the power box to turn on the light when he felt a cold gust of air and then what seemed to be a hand on his shoulder. He spun around and no one was there. He heard footsteps and flashed his flashlight in that direction. He again saw nothing, but started scanning the room with the flashlight. When he reached the open hatch, he saw a sailor standing there with hair so fair it looked white. The flashlight passed right through him. Bradshaw screamed, and the ghost disappeared. This was the scariest moment of Bradshaw's life. Bradshaw came to believe that there were at least two spirits on the ship, one that was good and one that was bad. And this Danny Bradshaw actually wrote a book, and Dolly had it and brought it on the trip with us, so that was pretty cool. This blonde-haired young man has been seen many times. People claim that hatches open and close on their own, lights turn off and on by themselves, objects move on their own, and people feel cold spots. Occasionally, a ghostly face is seen peering out of portholes. There are two security guards that take turns living on the ship now, so Danny Bradshaw was previous. He's not there anymore, of course. One of them told us about some of the experiences people have had on the ship. His first story was about a group who was allowed to investigate an off-limits area that had been where the torpedo hit the ship during the war. A woman in the group started shaking horribly like one would when they were having like an intense chill, kind of when you were hypothermic in New York. (laughs) In New York, yes. (laughs) It only went away after they got her out of that area. Then it happened to her again in another part of the ship. Then he shared the following experience that he had. This other time, when I locked down the ship. We have a security alarm system, and I lock every single door in sequence the same way every single night. And then in the morning, I go backwards. It's all the same. And after I lock these doors and set the alarm, the alarm will let me know if one of the doors is tampered or unlocked or open. If not, then the alarm system is clear. No bypass. And that night, it was clear. An hour later, the alarm goes off. And I thought, that's strange. So I looked at the monitor and said, the doors at the entrance are unlocked, at the deck. Okay? So I went down there and turned up, they're unlocked. And I was trying to play with the mind a little bit. Yeah. So I locked it, locked the other door, and locked it again. Look at the alarm system, no bypass, and it was clear. An hour later, the alarm goes off. And it said the other doors at the entrance were unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> I went down there, and sure enough, they were unlocked. Well, needless to say, I didn't set the alarm system for the rest of the night. So these are two things that happened. So he had trouble with the spirits unlocking the doors on him after he would set the alarms. And this guy was real no-nonsense, Kelly. He was like, here's the rules. If we see you without your mask, you're off the ship. Right. But then he gets up there, and all of a sudden, he was like telling us his ghost experiences. (laughs) And I'm like, I'm going to believe him. (laughs) Definitely. 
Now, before we got on the ship, we were in Wilmington for two nights. We got in on Friday, so we decided to do the Wilmington Ghost Walk. And we will be sharing about Haunted Wilmington in a later episode. And Dolly joined us for that, as well as Myra and Ken. And then the following evening, we all got together for dinner at, was it called the Rooster and the Crow? Yes, it was. And it was delicious. It was amazing food. And what was really cool is we had a larger group. We thought there was going to be eight of us, but Myra and Ken weren't able to join us there. They were busy over on another island and the ferry. They got sidetracked by the ferry. (laughs) The ferry sidetracked them. So they didn't join us. But since they thought we were going to have this bigger group, they just put us in an extra room that they had. So we had this big room. Yeah, huge private room. All to ourselves. All decorated for Christmas and everything. It was really cute. It was so cool. I was like, God, I wish we were like doing a live show right now. We had a group of people in here. It was so neat back there. But that was really great. And then we all made our way over to the battleship. And, you know, in the beginning, they have this discussion, kind of lay out the rules, tell you a little bit about the history of the ship. And the ghost hunters, of course, introduce themselves and talk about how they got involved with the show. And they all had to do these auditions and that kind of thing. What was great about them is they were very down to earth. We had Mustafa, Brian and Rochelle. Yeah, all three of them were great. And Daryl was supposed to be there, but he wasn't able to make it this time. I'm not sure why, but they just were really cool people. We're friends with Ray, who was putting on this event. So he called me up and he's like, well, who would you like to you know, go out with your group? And I was like, I really like Rochelle and Brian. I'd love to, <laughs> to do it with them. So they were the uh, ghost hunters that joined our little History Goes Bump group. And then we had a mother and her son who joined us. We did. And there was another guy. I'm not sure what their names were, but they were with us too. So our first area that we investigated was down several levels. We lost count, and it was in an area with lots of large shells. It was kind of funny because they told us, go all the way down to the bottom of the ship, but there was this chain across the doorway. So we're like, are we supposed to be going down there? The stairwell. <laughs> so we just, you know, we crossed the chain and went down. I don't know if we were in an area that we were even supposed to be in, <laughs> but I have to tell you, we mentioned that this was moored in mud, basically. They had pulled back the water from it and everything so they could do these repairs that the hurricane had caused. Well, in the process... They got this flooding of mud and gasoline in the bottom of the ship, which is part of the reason why they're like, there's certain areas we don't want you to go to. Well, those gasoline fumes. I think it was gas and oil, wasn't it? Something. It was all through that area of the ship. So we're like standing there going, woo. (laughs) Getting a little high there. (laughs) What was that? Did you hear something? Oh, no, it's just in my head. (laughs) It was pretty strong. But at first I thought, oh, my God, did the men have to work on a battleship that smelled like this all the time? And then when he explained that that had happened, I was like, oh, okay, Right. So while down there, we thought we heard footsteps above us. We're going to go ahead and play a little bit of audio from us being down there right now. You come all of our names is there a way you can tell us yours? If you can't directly communicate, maybe you make a loud enough noise to let us know that you're down here with us, or that you can see us. Is your name Dan? Did you hear that? Yes. 
size then? Yeah, I thought it was something like a door or something. Was it a side? I don't know what's on the side. Who's the side? Who's <laughs> <laughs> not having fun? <laughs> I don't know why, I'm just getting a feeling that somebody is standing right up there just sort of surveying everything. I love it. Right up here, on the mezzanine. Top of the steps. Yeah. Top of the steps. I'm going to come up the stair on here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but I had a blast of cold air when I got here on the steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was 72. And the temperature's gone down three degrees. That's so cold that it made my... Yeah, it's right there. That has temperature on it. That's right there. I'm going to come up the stairwell and we'd like to help out. I'd like you to help me out. Just so you can possibly give me your name. Everybody else is going to stay down here. I'll say the bus here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not generally going to stay here. For God's sake, don't fall. Oh, you're at the trees. That's the door. Dropping again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The temperature is just good. Yeah, it's gone down four degrees now. Anything I can help you with? Right there, where you just passed, Brian. Yes. It. That's where I got the feeling of somebody standing. Right there, next to the. It looks like a podium or something. Yeah, right there. I know you're probably very curious. About what we're doing here, I sure do know we need to harm or any disrespect in the team thing. We wanted to come here and tell you how much you mean to us. How much I respect you. Who's the man? Kendall. Oh. Kendall, you're just a one man noise machine. <laughs> But I was trying to get my stuff together for <laughs> Get up. Bossy now. Whitney mentioned feeling like someone was walking around in this upper area that overlooked where we were. Now, it's easy to poo-poo someone's feelings. But later, when Dolly and I and Diane were standing up there with Brian and Rochelle, after everyone else had left, the box that they used that senses everything was going crazy. And whatever was setting it off was clearly moving around. 
We thought maybe it was residual. We're going to go ahead and play the audio so that you can hear what that sounds like as we're discovering this. And forgive us, we cannot remember what that box is. They use it on the show all the time, but it... I think it, it's just called a data collector. Maybe it is. Maybe that's why I can't think of it, because I'm like, shouldn't it have some kind of technical <laughs> name, like a millimeter or something? But it detects temperature, tremors or something like that, if it you know, something causes it to vibration, quake, vibration, uh, EMF. That just turned blue. So, I was just trying to tell you this. One of the ladies said that this is the area that she said she keeps seeing somebody. As soon as that happened, this started happening. As soon as she said it. And then she said, I think it's following me. Nothing, 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 nothing until I get down here. Completely lit up like that again. And there's stuff in the chemical around here. There's nothing. That's what I was just checking for. But she keeps saying that this was the area that she saw it in, and I keep getting. What is that box for? You can see that there's nothing. But there's nothing right here. Hands underneath here. Yeah. But she continued telling me this was the area. Yeah, I mean that's going crazy right here. I mean, there's a light here with the wire, but I don't think that'd be doing if anything. If you're with us right now, what is it? If, you, <laughs> if you're here right now and you've been up here with us, can you light that up blue for me? We'd really appreciate it. I mean, if nothing else, it's showing you that it's not something electrical would keep going off. Kind of close to the again. Oh. Is it your flashlight? It's his electric person. Mm-hmm. It's me. Is your phone, is your phone on airplane mode? Yeah, well, my phone's back here. Yeah, it is. Hmm. So weird. There's the airplane. All the way over it's there. The I said it wasn't good I don't think so. Think so. Especially because it's not right. repeating it. I mean, I would think it would just keep repeating in the same area if it Who was said something. my name? Okay. I feel like that gets away, like coldness right here next to you. If it moves the movie, it's like. like I kept throwing it around my hand down there, but nothing else was Ah. Uh, is that you, Dan? Even my watch is on airplane. See, airplane. I have to say that phones and watches, or even that your phone might crack on top of that thing. On this one, you can. Yeah, I mean, this one. Oh, this one's shaking it up, though. Is yours? Get now look at that. Same area. And nothing. Nothing. That's why I said it can't be something triggering it that's electrical or something. It's moving. Do you see that, Rochelle? It's moving. That's a real basic. Same area, nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you hang out with us? Do you like the ladies? <laughs> Do you like me? Thank you. Talk about provoking. <laughs> oh, a little bit. <laughs> oh. 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 What's that? It's like somebody keeps walking back and forth. If he's in charge, it could be. It could be. We might have something residual. <laughs> Hey guys, he's still down there? Yeah, we're coming. Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay. It could be air. So we see that it's doing something. Let's go upstairs and see if it continues to do oh. that. Then there may be something going on with this possibly. Yeah. Or somebody could be with us. So do we have another EMF device at all? Trying to make contact. Let's just take it upstairs and see. Okay. It's just odd that she said this is the area that she thought she saw somebody. Yeah. Hilly, the other thing that we really noticed about being on this battleship, you imagine this is a battleship full of men, and our group was mostly women. So you think, wow, these guys are going to be so excited to have all these women on board the ship. <laughs> was that the case? Ego. <laughs> well, no, but I'm just thinking, you know, guys that are on a ship and you bring a bunch of ladies on board. No, oh, I know. And no, it was not the case. <laughs> no. It was like they did not want to talk to us. Nope. But we did have Dan and Ken with us, and we found that when Dan was asking questions, we got a lot more responses and such. Well, and he literally said several times that he had security clearance because of his position in, the, in the military. military. Right. So that helped. And it seemed like once he would give that information, all of a sudden, the floodgates opened. <laughs> yeah. Dolly brought along her equipment for doing the Estes method. So our investigation team that we now have, this would be our first time using the Estes method. And Dolly, myself and you, Kelly, we all gave it a try. What did you think? I didn't have as much luck with it, but I had to kind of, I think, I think I need to try it more and try to clear my mind more mm -hmm. and just kind of roll, roll with whatever it seems like it's saying. Versus really analyzing it too much and then not saying what I thought it might have said. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't mm -hmm. really know how to explain it, but that was my overall feeling with it. I have to tell you, it is difficult. We already have talked in previous episodes about how difficult it is just to listen to a spirit box because it's right. just that noise, that constant grating noise kind of gets to you after a while. Well, you can imagine when you have this in your ears. Now, the setup we had was a spirit box, an SB7 noise canceling headphones we didn't bother with having a blindfold because you know we just closed our eyes it wasn't that big of a deal i have to say doing it this way i didn't hear as much of the background with the radio because you can set it on different things like am fm how fast it goes so i didn't hear as much of the unnerving kind of noise that you get right but it is really difficult because you hear a lot of words that are getting spit out and you're like trying to analyze what was being said and then something else goes through and you're like okay and then you're also trying to figure out was that a word or was it just a blip from the radio station coming through? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so many times I I would hear something and I thought, did they just say such and such? But I just wasn't certain enough to even have the word come out of my mouth. <laughs> but I have to say with Dolly and then my experience with it. Yes, you guys. Pretty amazing <laughs> results that we get. It was definitely amazing. Yeah. So first, we just want to mention, again, how cool Rochelle and Brian were. They were unassuming and open to letting us try anything. And I just want to play this little bit in regards to that. Oh, thank you. For the Estes. Yeah. I mean, I've got... I like, you like the Estes? We want to try it tonight. We haven't tried it yet, okay. but I got it. Yeah. We wanted to try it with dousing rods. Try it with the lights. See? Yeah. Listen. We're here all night. You can do all those things all the time. And Brian and I are very open to trying different things. Like I said, usually these ghost hunts, these events, are about personal experiences. We don't have a client that we have to prove anything to. Right. So we can use whatever the hell we want. Okay. You, do, you have a crazy idea, but you just want to try it? We're down. Okay. Well, cool. yeah. I've got everything from the best if we want to do it. Yeah. Uh, now we want to share with you, this is Dolly's Estes session. Is that a last name? No way. No. No. Shouldn't.
Does any of that make any sense? Yes. Yeah. It was? Yes. No, Seriously. Can you tell us your right? Right. Yes. Damn. You're speaking like a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> he is a sailor. He just left. Are they not supposed to be over there? No. They aren't supposed to be over there. He's telling you to come back. It, all right, your thing's going off too, Kelly. It's been going off. You want to do it? Sure. You're like, I can't listen anymore. <laughs> you, it, it gets I know, back. I know. I and then it said, come, come back? So you heard Brian ask for a name, and Dolly says, Fitz. And then Brian asks if that is for Fitzgerald, and Dolly says, no. A listener named Jimmy was watching the Facebook Live, because I was doing a Facebook Live during this, and I apologize, right. the sound was horrible. Part of it is we're in masks, so it's hard to hear. All of our audio is going to be kind of muffled because we're wearing masks. He did manage to hear that part of it. And he said that he had seen that there was a Fritz on the crew list. There you go. So we were wondering, I wonder if she heard Fitz because later on, I'm going to hear something that I say the way I think I heard it, but it probably was a different word that would be more appropriate for what we were doing. It was very close. <laughs> so I just thought that that was really interesting that we had this and Fitz is not something that's going to come through on a radio. No. So we really were like, wow, that's cool that we got something like that. That's not a word that typically you're going to hit spit out on a, a radio station. Another person asked if it felt good to hear a woman's voice. And Dolly says back and then yes. Towards the end, you hear Dolly say, hey, a couple of times or hey, and then wait. And what had happened here is a couple people from our group had wandered over to where the big guns on the ship were located. And it was like this sailor that was speaking through her that we were talking to was telling them that they shouldn't be going over there. Keep in mind, Dolly can't see anything. She's right. got her eyes closed. She wasn't even facing the direction that they were. So she would have no idea that these people were going over there. So that, again, was very interesting. It was all very interconnected in terms of the conversation. I mean, it was as Brian was asking questions, Dolly was answering back. Mm hmm. When we asked if they aren't supposed to be over there, she says no and then back. And of course, we tell him, you guys, you need to come back. Don't be over there. Right. And as you hear, too, Dolly takes the headphones off partially through because when you have the noise canceling on, it doesn't completely make it so that you can't hear outside noise. But it's basically just hearing murmurs in the background. Exactly. Yeah. You can't you can't discern what's being said. So she took him off because she's like, is this making any sense? Because you have no idea. You're just spitting out words and you're like, <laughs> right. I don't know if people are even asking anything that pertains to this. And we're all like, yes, yes, keep going. Well, like we're going to be talking about later when I was using the dowsing rods and wearing those headphones. I could tell when you guys were laughing at me. And so mm -hmm. I was wondering what is happening right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it's not noise canceling totally, but it's enough that you can't hear what's being said to you. So... It, it helps you to focus more on what the spirit box is doing. Precisely. So then I said, oh, I'll give it a try. And at first what happened is I'm just facing Dolly. And I think we're just kind of off to the side by ourselves. So I have no idea that later on the group kind of comes over to where we are and that Brian starts having a conversation with me. I could hear his voice, but I didn't know if he was talking to me, if he was talking to the group behind me, because I right. just thought it was me and Dolly. 
And so, <laughs> nope, <laughs> you were the center of attention. Yeah, I, I took my headphones, you know, when we got done with it, I took the headphones off and everybody's like, oh my God, that was amazing. It was incredible. And I'm like, oh, okay. Cause you just really feel like, wow, I'm just throwing this stuff out and nothing's happening. So we're going to go ahead and play that and let you guys listen to that. Here, I'll give it a go. Let me see the speed. Is your name David Burns, Lieutenant? Oh, he's got it on AM. That's because I was here at a radio station or something too. And your battle station. What should it be on? Well, he was he was just trying different things. So let's see. Is that yours? Mine. Wanted that online? Yeah. You want to use it? This wasn't doing anything. Let me get that on. They're tight. Let's see if I got... The skin's not, wasn't going off. Actually, Is there somebody with us? <laughs> it's a symphony. You get a gay tune. Matter? You get a gay tune. What matters? Does something it's matter to you? It's not any worse near the ground. It's not any... It's the same higher. Next. 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 What, what, <laughs> what do you want to do next? Here's just taking it from ready. You're ready? What are you ready? Sorry? You're sorry. Are you too close to your guns? Why are you sorry? I don't know. Are you sorry because you're at war? Probably. You don't like to be at war. Do you want to go home? Do you have any friends on the on the ship? Are you sad? Maybe. 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 Maybe again. Again. You don't want to talk about it? that that's it you don't want to talk about it it's okay what it's okay you don't have to talk about it huh <laughs> can you tell us about I'm David I'm you're David. David okay are you lieutenant David Burns Are you here by yourself? Are you the pilot of the Kingfisher? I see your plane right over there. Can you fly? Why? I want to know your job. Do you work on the plane? Tell us what you do, David. Please. Rabbits? Rabbits. Maybe do you have rivets? a pet rabbits? Could it be rivets? Oh, could it be rivets, yeah. Are you a riveter? Do you repair the ship? Ship. Do you have anything to do with the plane? Maybe. Would you like to talk to me about the battle? I've been to battle. Maybe you can speak to me about it. Yeah. We'll talk about it. You know you just do you just did your job, right? You feel bad? You can only do it so long. Yeah, and then it'll start saying stuff. Like, in a, like There were a couple times I could tell it was saying like a sentence, uh -huh. but it goes so fast, you're like, 
What uh, was that? I could tell in your eyes. You're yeah, because like, I would what? I would start to go. What was that? Because I knew yeah. it said something, and it's the same voice, so well, you know he it's was all together. If you wanted to talk about being in, in battle and whatever, and you're like maybe, and then yes, and then he then he wanted to talk to you, and then anybody a speed lister? <laughs> yeah, it just goes I so fast that it's boxes? like. Dang. In reverse. Yeah, I had on it on reverse 100 FM. What do you put it on? AM. Really? Put all, I always put it on AM and I go backwards, obviously. Right. Because AM, you will run into spots where it'll come across and you'll hear a radio station or something like that. Right. When it's in the external speaker? If we have uh, one. I, yeah, I don't have an external one. And one. it's really hard to hear. You know what I mean? It's it's hard to focus in on. Yes. I use the That's AM because a lot of stations won't be happening or broadcasting at 1041 oh, as much true. as in, as much as an FM station would. Right. Okay. Right. So it's sweeping rapidly over a series of different stations on okay. AM backwards and the you, chances you of, put it on 100? Did you hear um, it? That's the fastest. The sweep yeah. rate is what I, yeah, it's on 100. Yeah. So that's what I do when I do them. I want to tell all of you guys thank you for being engaging and investigating with us and not making us do all of it. Because we, we forgot you were here. No, it's fine. No. We've gone on some, taken some groups on investigations and they at events show. and they won't say anything. And do you know how hard it is yeah. to just, I'm like, also, Are you having fun? Do you like ghosts? Do you want to talk to me again? Do you like me? Also, when you do, do you want your money back? I don't know. <laughs> You're welcome. It's like Paulie Thank you. <laughs> Also, when you do a show, it isn't two hours no. of no. being on a deck. Right. We go in on a Monday, we leave it Friday, sometimes they're even two weeks long. Mm -hmm. Where you're investigating for 12 to 14 hours. Mm -hmm. So it's a period of time and it goes days. You see, repeat, you see 43 minutes. Of a week. Uh, so Do you like, want to talk yeah. to him again? I was investigating. Things. About being in battle? When I put this down, it stops. Awesome. Yes. Yes, he wants to talk, he wants to, you. To, talk to you. Again. How? Let's talk about a battle. I've been there before. What can I help you with? Do you feel sad about it? Daniel? He did it. I did it. I've been there. I was, I'm a Marine that went to Iraq and fought in Iraq for seven months. So I understand you being upset, but you could talk to me if you would like. Would you like to talk to me about the battle that you were in? Fight? I fought. There's a lot of people that come on this ship daily, probably, that haven't actually been to battle, and you don't possibly get to talk to somebody about it, but you can talk to me. I've been there. You don't have to feel sad. You did your job. I know. That's exactly what we do. We do our job for our country so that everybody can be free. Do you realize you're a hero? Do you realize you're a hero? Also, why do you still stay here? For the mission? Do you still do you stay on this ship because you feel like it's your duty? Yeah. It is your duty, but it's over now. Your duty has been done and you can quit. Mission the mission has been accomplished. It's time for other people in the service to take over. Do you feel sad that you might have to leave or you feel sad that you've done something? David. Hi, David. I'm Brian. Or Sergeant Murray. Would you like us to back up and give you space for a little bit?
your mission has bye. been... Huh? What she say? said bye. Bye? I, we'll leave. But I want you to know this before... Downward? I want you to know this before we leave. If you're remaining here because you feel like you still have to do your duty, you do not. You've done it. The mission's been accomplished. You can go about doing whatever you want now. You're a hero. For? Uh, the sacrifices that you made for the country, for all of us sitting here. Thank you. For me? And what you did. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But we're going to back away for a little bit, okay? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to. We're going to give you some time. You had to... pressure going on back here. You did have way. pressure. We're going to let you be, let you do your, you know, do what you need to do for the rest of the evening. Like I said, we appreciate you talking to us. Thank you so much. You are a hero. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we back away? Get away. Gotcha. Well, that's it. Thank okay. you for okay. your service. Okay. <laughs> wow. That was a complete conversation. That was, was it? That awesome. was a complete conversation. <laughs> wow. Cool. It's so weird when you're it doing out. it because you're like, I don't know if any of this is making any sense. Well, when I was oh, yeah. doing it and I took it off and I looked at Kelly and I said, is this making sense? And she's yeah. like, yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah, because you just feel like you're just yeah. putting stuff out. And then there's things that you're missing because you're like, I know it just said something, but I, I don't know what yeah. it was. Oh, you have to that was, it'll be all really on your recorder. Yeah, I like all you guys. Like a biomass. You guys want to create a team? <laughs> What's that? You guys want to create a team? Absolutely. <laughs> we just did. Team America. Yeah, I like it. Do you guys want to be vampires? <laughs> you know, like on a real, like serious note, do you? Because yeah. we're thinking about making a. Was it? That was wild. We're going to be vampire amazing. court of Godfrey. <laughs> We I like vampires. Vampires, okay. <laughs> I believe that they may exist. I know you might think I'm nuts. But uh, there's been sightings. <laughs> and I as well want to do it. it. And we then we found out in, TV. we found out in Texas there's this whole like cult that like lives as vampires. And oh, you're like, how do you do that? that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like oh yeah. Do I get perks? <laughs> like, I don't know. Depends upon what blood type you are. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. One of the things that we should do now is back away, yeah. stay true to our word. Yes, because we did say that back we were going to go. And now we don't have, we, we still got a little bit of time, but we don't have to go into the questions and stuff. These are like people just like right. us. Yeah. So now we just talk amongst ourselves, and a lot of times Rochelle and I will do that. Yeah. <laughs> Your views to it. We'll just go and do a little talk and okay. stuff like that. That was things, amazing, though. That was, that was amazing incredible. Yeah. So. Beep. See you there. Oh yeah. Cool <laughs> feedback. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Critical. <laughs> The thing I thought that was really interesting there is you hear me say the word rabbits and I said it like a question. Most of the time when we're saying the words, I'm saying it exactly as I hear it. So if it's said like a question or Same if it's tone. said like angrily or however it was being said, I'm just repeating it exactly how it was, except for that word. Because when I heard rabbits and I said it as a question mark, because I'm like, what the hell? That's a weird <laughs> word to have coming through. <laughs> But then when I listen back, because again, I don't even know what happened during this until I'm editing later and go back to listen to it. Because I was like, I want to hear how that went. Right. And then you hear that Myra's like, well, maybe it's rivets. And it's like, A oh, riveter. Mm -hmm. and that sounds pretty damn close to rabbits. And the words are coming through so fast and your brain is trying to figure out what word was that. I could see why I would have heard rabbits rather than rivets very close to each other. And I, I wouldn't have even thought of rivets, even though we're on a ship. I just heard it as rabbits. But I thought that was really cool, too. It definitely was. And the thing I really loved is my dad's name is David. So I love that whoever was speaking to us was apparently David. We next investigated the officer's mess hall, 
which Whitney told us was not actually used for that, but rather for training and Catholic Mass was held there. Whitney tried the Estes method in this room, and she got nothing. At another point, we ended up in a corner near sickbay, and myself and Tiffany felt really dizzy, as though the ship was moving. But the ship was sitting in mud because it needed repairs from the hurricane that had blown through earlier in the month. So while we were there in that corner, this interesting thing happened. Were you on the ship when it was attacked? Whoa, I just had another huge sway in my legs. That was weird. Yes. Thank you. Can we straighten them out again? Is Dolly still in there? Dolly? What was that? That was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's there. She's using them? She's, yeah, I got two back there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, her. It's pointing to where Dolly is. It is pointing to where Dolly is. Yeah. That's weird. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just got two back there. That's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. Okay, so you want to hear something crazy? What? Kelly, what? Kelly's out there, and she's like, I really want to... I think she wanted to try to use the noise canceling headphones, so she goes, Is Dolly in there? Where's Dolly at? And the rods pointed yep. to in there. Oh. Hi. Hi. So, yeah, Kelly, we were wanting to get a hold of the noise canceling headphones so that she could do the Estes method with the dousing rods. Right. <laughs> the dousing rods pointed to where Dolly was, who was in another room over behind us. Yes, it was so funny because I just said all of a sudden when I, when I was asking about her, they just went, Roop. And they pointed right over there. I'm like, oh, my goodness, they're pointing to where Dolly is. <laughs> Which is really fascinating because usually they either cross, either they don't do anything, they cross, or they point back towards your shoulders. They right. usually don't both point in the same direction. Although I've had that happen a couple different times, yeah. but it just is not very common. No. So our group had a chance to do a dowsing session in the sick bay. Dan and Tiffany have both served in the military in the Air Force branch. We know that you guys would have at least a few pilots on board to fly the Kingfisher. Did you help launch the Kingfisher from this ship? Is that a no? Thank you. I could feel this one pop though that you mentioned. Yeah, the earlier. grind. Mm -hmm. Could you move them back to the straight ahead pointing towards me again? Were you a patient in the infirmary? Yes. Thank you. Did Thank you. Do you have a surgical procedure? Were you just sick with something else, like a cold or the stomach flu? Were you injured in some way? Yes. Were you just injured doing something on the ship, like your normal routine job? Maybe it twisted an ankle or something. Or something more severe. <laughs> Break something. Did you have uh, injury to your stomach? Or stomach pains? It was just that I know where my stomach hurt. It looks like it's trying to go to yes, yes. Yep. Could you straighten them back out, pointing towards me again? Was that stomach pain from an injury or an ill? Yes. Or I heard you said it was from an injury, I thought. Yeah. Oh. oh. Was this an injury because you were fighting with someone on board the ship? That looks like it's trying to say no. Mm -hmm. What else would cause your stomach to get injured? You're not fighting. Just medical. Just Dead. Did well, there was the one. There was the one. Um, what? What did you just say, Kelly? Rupture of spleen. I need an appendectomy. Huh. It started to blink when you'd said spleen, so I thought maybe. Were you the sailor who was injured in the washroom? Did you have stomach ulcers? Were you in sick bay for over a week? Yes. That was a heck of an injury. By any chance did you 
get food poisoning? Is that why your stomach, you had issues with your stomach? No. No, they already established, I think, that it was an accident. Can you point it straight towards me again? We want to figure out how long you were here in the sick bay. So were you in sick bay for over a month? Did you leave sick bay? I read about a couple of them that did die from being sick, but I can't remember how many. We seem to be talking to someone who had an injury to their stomach. The next morning, Diane was talking to Whitney about this, and she remembered reading something in the oral histories. Cornelius Fantano was a steward's mate second class, and he had an appendicitis attack, and they had to do surgery to remove his appendix. Could this be who we were talking to? I just thought that was so fascinating when she was looking back through her oral histories. Whitney had a stack of these things. I think it was like an inch thick that she was carrying around with her everywhere. And she goes, wait, let me look through this. And she did. And she pulled it out. And she goes, because I think she'd been talking to you earlier that morning. Right. And she said, Kelly had told me that you guys had had this experience in the sick bay. And so she pulled that out. And I went, whoa, how weird. Because you can hear in that piece that we shared there with you that we're going back and forth. And we're like, did you get punched in the stomach? Was it some kind of injury? And it does give you that feeling that, oh, this guy had something going on that could have been an appendicitis attack. Right. And we clued into that initially because Ray was having a pain. Yeah, and we had no idea, obviously, about this until the next day. So I thought that was really cool. Now, when it really came through to us that the guys weren't interested in talking to us, the ghost hunters let our group go off and do their own kind of thing. We don't have any EVPs to play for you guys because there were enough people on this ship running around in all these different areas that I wouldn't trust anything that was echoing or coming from the background. Yeah, it was it was a pretty big group and there was a lot of hustle and bustle going on. And when they kind of set us off to all go do our own thing, it, it was really bad. We kind of decided we wanted to go up near the bridge and see if we could get up there and get any kind of interactions that we had there. And as we got up into that area, you've got all this radar equipment that's up there and other things like that. And there was this one point where you guys, I think, had gone up ahead of us and Tiffany and I were going through the room following you guys, but we were a little bit behind. And all of a sudden we both were like, what was that? And it sounded almost like dragging footsteps. It wasn't quite like footsteps. It kind of was like a sliding kind of noise. We're like, oh, what was that? And one of the things that we were looking for is we'd heard what sounded like voices or something else that could have been paranormal. But I also knew we had gone on the ship during the day to get a look at everything while it was daytime. And there was this area up on the bridge where you could push buttons and it would play the sounds from that time period, like the different sirens that they would set off. And so... I was like, well, we need to go up there and see if there's some people up there. Because if there are, then they probably just push something. So we went up there with you guys. And then we were like, oh, why don't you come down and let's go down here? Because we heard this noise down there. So like I said, we feel like we got our best interactions when Dan would ask the questions. I real quickly want to play this interaction that we got with the dowsing rods when we were up on the main deck. Are you glad that the women are here? Because you know, they're, they're, they're noise constantly. I couldn't, when I was doing it, I couldn't hear anything anybody was saying. Is that saying. a no? Push it all the way. Is it busy? What did you ask? Are you glad that the women are here? Oh. I want to know. Well, <laughs> it's glad that the guys are here, apparently. <laughs> and this just lit up when I said that. <laughs> so clearly, they're telling us that the ladies are not welcome. <laughs> Indeed not. (laughs) And here is how things changed when Dan jumps in. And this is when we are near the radar equipment. I'll play that audio for you guys. Do you work in the radar room over there? Hmm. Let's just blip too. Because sometimes I'm like, we ask in the past tense and they may think they're still working. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to show us the really cool room you work in with all the really cool equipment? This one up to yellow. Can you make it go all the way to red? See if you can make it go all the way to red. Please. Do you not want to show us because we're women and we're not allowed in there? (laughs) You don't want to impress us? 
<laughs> can you point it back towards the front? He might get in trouble for doing that, That's you know. True. Could you point it towards, can you point the rods towards us? We don't want you getting thrown in the brig. So we have Dan here with us. Would you like to show Dan the equipment in the radar room? This one's sticking, but it's okay. trying to go that way. So that's a no. Can you point them back towards the front again, towards us? Be I was just going to ask if that's the issue. Yeah, especially since it would have been in full decent radar, it was a brand new thing. And this is one of the first ships to use it, I think. Mm -hmm. Can you point them towards us again? Would it make a difference if you knew that Dan is in the military? Would you show it if you knowing I that Dan is in the military? Clarence, can you show me? Yes. Wow. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Can Thank you point you those much. back towards me again? <laughs> Were you the evaluator? Were you the officer in charge? This just flipped up to yellow. That, again, this one just keeps sticking. I can feel. Whoa. That felt really weird. It's like it's getting frustrated because yeah, they're not going. that's exactly how it felt. We're sorry that it's sticking on you. We're getting all the officers to talk to you us. I wonder not. if they're liking your rank. Yeah. That felt so weird. I think it feels weird in general because you can feel the magnetism. Mm -hmm. like. <laughs> but especially like when yeah. it's really forceful like that. Yeah, that's why like when people tell you, oh, it's just your mind moving. And I'm like, oh. When you're holding if that it thing and it starts moving, moving. It, we would have had all kinds of communication at Charleston jail. <laughs> we get like one quick answer and they were out. But I mean, you can feel <laughs> almost the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're not trying to insult you. It's just this is what some people think. So, <laughs> can you point them back towards the middle again? Thank you. Thank you. This one's got strong presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you like the food in the officer's mess? So they didn't always have to eat the same food no. as the enlisted officers men? ate a totally different... Really? Enlisted sailors ate powdered eggs and stuff, and officers always had fresh fruit and fresh eggs. Oh, wow. A different... <laughs> <laughs> they had the good and stuff. I just totally had yep. to pop to get fresh it to move coffee. the one on my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> so being an officer was a good thing. Yes. yes. Could you move him back towards the center again? Did you have to share uh, your room with a bunkmate? So this is probably an upper ranking officer if they had their own room. Mm -hmm. If you were, a, were you a commander? Oh, he did not have to share his. He was like, oh no, I didn't. <laughs> could you point him back towards the center again so we could ask that question one more time just to make sure? Please. Can you point them towards the center? I know this one's tough to move, but Thank I you. Need to do it. Thank you. Were you the XO? Were you the CO? Oh. It stands for commanding officer. Commanding That's officer. the captain oh. of the ship. That's why he wouldn't show you guys anything. Yeah. <laughs> and he has clearance, so he would show him. What, were you here when the ship was torpedoed? Can you go back there at all? Hmm? Have you gone to the back at all? Out of this room? Out around the corner? No. Because there's a lot of activity back there too. We're talking to an officer right now. A CO. You want us to go over there? We can go over there. Okay. We'll, we'll go that way then. Okay, thank we'll you. go that way. Thank you. Thank you for your service and thank you for yes. with us. We appreciate you. <laughs> well, he was, he did grab our attention. <laughs> we went to another area and our interactions led us to believe we were talking to a Japanese cryptographer. But the answers were slow in coming and we were all feeling pretty drained about this time. It was almost two o'clock in the morning. Because we have to tell you guys, this started off with it was going to be from seven to midnight. We're like, oh, good. Right. That's we'll only, get to sleep early. <laughs> that's only a couple hours after our bedtime. Well, then they were like, surprise, we're going to be able to do this until two. And then it was 2.30. And then when we finally three. got on board, it was three. <laughs> and Kelly and I are looking at each other. I'm like, I don't know if I can stay up till three o'clock. 
So about 2 a.m., we were all feeling pretty tired. And we've noticed when we've done these overnight investigations or late into the night investigations, the minute our energy is drained, the activity just seems to go down. It does. Yeah. So I don't know if it's because they've already fed everything they can off of us or if we're just not giving them anything to feed off of. So our group decided to pack it in and head back to the central meeting area. So we had such a fantastic time. And I did want to mention the production company, our friend Ray. He's the one that got this all together. He has Flumeri Promotions, LLC. And that's spelled F-L-U-M-E-R-I. Perfect. Uh, If you're ever wanting to do an investigation... And oftentimes they do have some of the ghost hunters with them. Mm -hmm. You can definitely check them out online. They've got a Facebook page. And this is our second investigation that we've done with his company. And it's been fantastic. Yeah, they do a great job. And as we said with the previous episode, we socially distanced, kept our masks on. Absolutely. We can do this safely. And uh, we just had a wonderful time. We had a great time meeting the ghost hunters in person and hanging out with some of our spooky crew. We are learning so much about the other side and having a lot of fun while doing it. We can't wait for our next investigation. Is the USS North Carolina haunted? That That is for for you to decide. decide. Well, Kelly had a great time and can't wait to do another event either with Flumeri Promotions or our own kind of deal. Also wanted to touch on really quickly. Previous episode, we talked about the old jail in Charleston. When I'm doing the editing on the show, I probably have explained this before, but I listen with a different ear than when people are listening for enjoyment. So I'm always listening for those mouth breaths that are so irritating. (laughs) Which I do all the time. (laughs) If there's too much space between words, if we say something wrong, uh, making sure that all of our audio is even so that one of us isn't lower than the other one. So I'm always listening with a critical ear like that. And sometimes I don't hear things that I hear later because I do listen to the show for pleasure after it's been loaded up just like everybody else. When you guys download it on Thursdays, I'm downloading it too. And I'm just listening as if I'm a listener. When I was listening to it and I was listening to the audio that we recorded while Joy was doing the tour, I caught something kind of interesting. And I quickly grabbed my phone because I'm like, I'm going to message Kelly and tell her about it. (laughs) And then I look on my phone and Kelly had already messaged me because she's like, hey, do you think that this possibly means blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I was just going to message her about that. We're always in each other's minds. (laughs) Something like that. Anyway, what happened is we explained that we thought maybe we weren't getting a lot of activity because we had this black tourmaline in the bag with us. And that maybe it was repelling this negative energy and that's why they weren't coming around us. Well, Joy had this spirit box app or something going on her phone. So if you guys occasionally heard a word getting spit out by a creepy voice and she's like, what was that? And stuff like that. That's what's going on. Her phone is throwing out these words. Most of them didn't seem to pertain to anything, didn't seem to mean anything. So we didn't really even pay that much attention to it or include much of it in the episode. I don't even think we really mentioned it. When we're standing there and she's talking in this area. I'm going to go ahead and play this audio. It's about a minute and a half. And you're going to hear at the very beginning, one of the words that comes through on this app that she has is request. And then she's talking a little bit. And then the next thing it says is where is and then black. But I think after that, they locked him in a cell that was right back there. What was that? That was right back there in that, that corner. Um, it said request. Okay. So I think that they were held right back here. Why? Because this window, this window, and the one up on the third floor are where people still to this day from magazine or walking around the building see a woman trapped in the jail. They call the police all the time. The police don't even bother coming. Why? They know there's no floors <laughs> over here. There's no way a live woman could be seen over there. So they don't even show up anymore. They also very nicely in the very beginning told us to, uh, the police asked us to remove our motion detected alarms because they went off all night long. My boss still gets false alarms from this building all the time. And it isn't people trying to get in, it's people trying to get out. All right, what did it say? Where is, and then it said black. Okay, let's go this way, guys. Well. Kelly and I, when we hear this, I'm like, well, that was weird. It's saying it has a request. And then it tells us what the request is. Because again, this is a spirit box. 
giving a full sentence, where is black? And I've got black tourmaline in my bag. Right. Do you think (laughs) that the spirits were asking where that is? They were requesting its removal. Who knows? Yeah, it's hard to say, but it sure struck me when I was listening to the episode and noticed that correlating. So maybe, I know I said I don't think the jail's haunted, (laughs) but maybe we did have a little something going on. And maybe that even backs up the idea that the black tourmaline was either protecting us or we would have been served a lot better if we'd left it in the car. Yeah, I think so. Who knows? And then later on, also, when Joy was discussing the property, it used to be a potter's field for, what, 100 years, I think it was? Something like that. And thousands of people. Basically what they built the jail on top of was this potter's field. Right. And thousands of people were just buried there in this potter's field. And then the jail was built on top. And right at the time when she was discussing that, horrible popped out of the spirit box. Yeah. So that was interesting, too. We'd love to have you guys check out our website at historyghostbump.com. And if you want to send us some feedback, you can do that at historyghostbump at gmail.com. I did get a message over on Instagram from Kirtland. She says, hi there. I'm a Florida native. I've always loved history. I got into listening to podcasts while at work about a year ago. Yours was one of the first ones I listened to and by far my favorite. I started with the newer ones and have now worked my way from the very beginning up. Episode 110, Felt Mansion, really got my attention. At the beginning, you mentioned Genius Loki. I've experienced this before. It actually happens quite often. The first time it ever happened was while on a ghost tour in St. Augustine. I started feeling nauseous, so I went to the back of the group, thankfully because I did get sick. Oh, my. The guide noticed and told me to go hug this big tree near us. I did, and it resided. So it was like she needed to ground herself or something. Huh. Now, the only way I can explain this is that it was a very intense feeling of deja vu. It's like I've dreamed this before and everything around me is happening just how it played out. I always have to get up and leave the area to get the feelings to go away. It mostly happens at work now. I do work in a building that used to be a very popular restaurant hangout area for years until the mid-90s. I don't know if maybe I'm just sensitive to certain things or if I need to see a doctor. She's like, oh my LOL. Goodness. <laughs> Either way, Genius Loki sounds very similar to what I experience. I would love to know if it happens to others, as my coworkers probably think I'm crazy trying to explain it to them. LOL. I don't remember ta- talking about that. Uh, when I looked up Genius Loki, it was talking about, and it, it, it is Genius Loki and it's L-O-C-I, and it's a protective spirit of a place. Interesting. And it's often depicted in religious iconography. I don't know if we were referring to a spirit that's protecting a place, making people feel sick so that they get away. If maybe that's what's going on. But it's interesting. And that's definitely something that you have experienced in places. Well, this is true. <laughs> and Ty sent me a message. He says, going way back to a fairly early episode of HGB, the one on Gettysburg. My then fiance, now wife, and I went to Gettysburg in late August 2012. As it was nearing twilight. I forget if it was Warren or Crawford Avenue. Anyways, we were on a long straightaway drive with grassy fields on both our left and right headed towards the Devil's Den. We saw a full-body apparition walk across the road in front of us. I can confidently call it a full-bodied apparition because, well, the full body. Also, they crossed the road just a little too close for comfort, so we stopped. And we saw him just fade out within a couple seconds. And then he said, also, if you ever go for yourself, take dousing rods, trust me. Oh, very good. We'll have to do that at some point. We will. And that reminds me that Sarah had mentioned in the Spooktacular crew that she had used dousing rods that one time. She was in a closet somewhere or something, and she said it was just amazing how they moved and everything. Right, yeah. You can (laughs) feel that there's something else there. It's not just your mind moving them. Exactly. Also, Ty had asked if we'd done an episode on Bobby Mackey's Music World, which we did, and uh, Jerry and Tracy of Hillbilly Horror Stories actually joined us on that one. And he shared a picture that his wife took there. I put it up on our Instagram, so if you guys haven't seen it, please go over there and check it out. But it looks like there is a spirit at the end of the bar. It sure does. I don't know how to explain that picture. You know, I usually poo-poo pictures. But even if, let's say, that they were lying and there really was a woman at the end of the bar, I don't know how she would show up as black and white. This is true. Because this person clearly looks black and white, almost looks like they have a billowy kind of dress, old-fashioned dress or something on with billowy sleeves. And then Misty contacted us via email and she said, just listen to episode 362, which was our last one. I'm in South Carolina, so of course I was excited to listen. I had to tell you about my parents. They have a piece of the Berlin Wall. My dad's sister was single and traveled the world in the mid to late 80s. She was in a nearby country when the wall came down. She immediately left and went to Germany and brought back a brick-sized chunk of the wall with her. So now several family members have a piece of the Berlin Wall. 
Very cool. I try to tell people today about it and they look at me like I'm crazy and say, what's the Berlin Wall? I was only 11 or 12 years old at the time, but it does make me feel old. Now we really feel old. (laughs) No kidding. (laughs) That was the year I graduated from high school. And then she said to uh, make sure we let her know forever in Western North Carolina near Asheville, which eventually we shall be there for sure. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. I've been your host, Diane. And this has been Kelly. You take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This episode has been brought to you by our executive producers. Dispatches from the Grave Digger. We'd like to welcome into the cemetery, Elizabeth Lyricus. We're going to be placing you in a chest tomb. Thank you so much for supporting HGB. Join me in the cemetery by becoming an executive producer. You can join on Patreon or PayPal. Check out the Support the Show tab on the website for more information. And now this moment, not, oh, I was going to burp. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, what stopped you? What's, what's happening? The battleship earned 15 battle stars for its effort. Efforts. 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 It got that for its efforts. <laughs> this could be your Bluetooth toothbrush or Bluetooth toothbrush. <laughs> okay. He ruled Denmark and Norway from the year nine. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that numbers, one. <laughs> numbers. It seems the king had a dead tooth that had turned a gray blue color. Ew. <laughs> Kelly, I don't think they had proper dental stuff yeah, going on back then. It reminds me I need to go to the dentist. <laughs> uh oh. You don't want to get a Bluetooth. Oh my god. The Air Force concluded that there was no evidence that UFO sightings were extraterrestrial. Ve- Vicapickles? Yes. Did you know that that is what aliens are flying around in? That's actually an alien language. I just learned it. Aren't you proud? Something was lost in translation. I don't know. (laughs) For me, everything's lost in translation. Most UFOs were said to be natural phenomenon. The name Project Blue Book was meant... (laughs) No, not again. The ship's first action would come after she was sent to the Pacific to help out with the Guadalcanal campaign. Her anti-aircraft barrage during the Battle of the Eastern Solomons in August of 1942 helped save the carrier Enterprise, George E. Colon. Uh-huh. <laughs> you, you, you missed a period there somewhere. And his last name is certainly not Colon. But great. Kelly. Wonderful. I'm sure he's so My proud. God. He died in battle and here Kelly calls him Colon. <laughs> Occasionally a ghostly face is in, occasionally a ghost it's hard to say ghostly too. <laughs>